Hello. So I have Mike here. Hello. We got a good one for you today. Woo. Please subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we put up new videos. Hello, I am Tara, the author of the Dining on a Dime cookbook, where you can eat better, spend less. We have a new hardcover with full color pictures and over 1,200 recipes and tips to help you save money on your grocery bill. Check it out at livingonadime.com. All right, guys, today we are answering a viewer comment that we received several weeks ago. Now, I will say, in one shape or form, some way or another, we get something to this effect every single day. So we are going to address it right now. This is in response to my mom raising two teenagers on $500 a month and how people keep saying it's just not possible that she could do that, okay? So this is the viewer's comment. She said, but your mom did that back in what, the 1980s? You have to include inflation, which is not always neatly in line with income. I am not saying you are wrong, but you fail to address the huge realistic gaps in your advice, which is how many people with pull yourself up by the bootstraps mentality get around by having to admit that there will be gaps even when someone wants to take your advice. One example, Jane Lynn... <laughs> well, I was laughing because she starts out by saying, I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> like... Okay, go ahead. <laughs> one example, Jane lives in California. Due to medical reasons, no one will hire Jane in her condition, even though Jane wants to work so she can afford food. Your common answer to such a situation is to move to a cheaper state. But Jane does not have any family or friends that can help her move, and she cannot afford to move. And she has joint custody with her ex. If she moves, she will not see her young child again unless the ex, ex provides the funds, and he, which he won't. What should Shane do, Jane do? She already sleeps on a cot in a one-bedroom apartment shared with eight other low-income roommates. What should, Shane, what should Jane do? This is only one example of how someone cannot take your advice and it's not due to lack of wanting to take your advice. It's because every situation is different and everyone's abilities are different. And I think maybe viewers would like to see you admit. They want to see me admit it, dear. <gasps> what? But there are really holes in your theories. Do you know how many times we get the phrase, I would like to see you admit? All the time. All the time. I work in social work. I have been educated and employed to help fix situations like Jane or your viewers for that matter point. What? I don't know what that means. I've done this for 21 years. I appreciate stern advice. It does help keep people from falling into a victim mentality even when they are to some degree victims. Generational poverty, lower IQs, lack of ability to make good decisions, how is it a lack of ability? IQs have nothing to do with things. And though. lack of ability to make good is how how do you not have the ability to make a good decision? That doesn't because even make sense. Because you just sense. don't do it. Chronic health issues and sometimes all of the issues at once. What? I am not trying to be disrespectful towards your opinions, as I do think overall your messages are helpful. But I would love to see you admit that not all people are able to take your advice, even when they want to. I am not trying to be disrespectful towards your opinions as I do think your overall message are helpful, but I would love to see you admit that all, not all people are able to take your advice even if they want to. It takes a lot of energy, skill, intelligence, and motivation to survive on $600 a month. And sadly, most people can't do it. Oh, It's like that scene in Mr. Blandings where she's reading the must sacrifice. <laughs> Okay, you guys who've seen that movie, comment if you know what you're talking about, if you know what we're talking about. All right, let's just break this whole entire thing down and wow. say what a bunch of hooey it is. First of all, well, my response to this woman on the website or on YouTube was, 
Sometimes you just got to suck it up until you can get things straightened out and your kid has grown and you can make your life better. She promptly deleted the entire thing. So first of all, this tells you this person is just being a troll and she doesn't actually want advice for helping with this, these people. But we're going to break this down because we get a lot of people with this mentality all the time commenting. Well, the first thing I would say is <clears throat> you have to decide. Are you getting fresh with me? I am. First thing is you have to decide, am I here to learn something and improve my life? Or do I just want to make an excuse? And this is completely just making an excuse. And not only that, it's not making an excuse for her. It's making an excuse for a fictional person. That doesn't even exist. And the reality is the person with all of these problems together, I challenge someone to find that person. <laughs> the reason why is, um, well, first of all, let me, let me just say, if you... If you come and you say, man, there's absolutely nothing of value for me here, then go find it wherever you want it. But a lot of people are finding that value here. Secondly, this person that you described does not exist. And there's so many flaws in the what if story. And you can't be asking what if stories. The question isn't what if all these other people question is, what about you? What is your situation that you're in? And I know some of you are in pretty difficult situations. But <clears throat> this reminds me, when I worked for public television in, in the production department, we would go out and interview people and produce that, eh? shows. <laughs> and there was one show that, that I was part of. And the producer of the show was out looking for people that were in the most dire straits because she thought if I find the people in the most dire straits, it will support what I'm trying to say in this show. So she spent tireless hours calling and finding and calling social workplaces, calling individuals, calling other TV stations, and just going all over the place to try to find the most destitute people she could find for us to interview for this show. And when we finally got out on the location and were shooting the shows, at one moment she kind of said to me, I'm really having a hard time with this because I can't find an angle that I can shoot where you don't see the big screen TV or the fancy car or the whatever else. 250 DVDs, 1,000 DVDs, the Coke cups, the pizza boxes. And these were... I mean, they were people that were obviously not in a good place, but they weren't in a good place because every possible thing that could ever go wrong has gone wrong to them outside of their control. And people do have things that happen outside of their control. We understand that. But in this circumstance, um, the people the, the people basically had a lot of stuff. It's clear they ate out a lot. They didn't respect their houses, all sorts of things like that. They weren't trying to better their situation. And so I asked my friend, why? So, because she was very, very determined that, that we really have to change civilization because of these problems that she's heard about. And so I said, well, uh, she, said, I, she said, well, I'm finding that they're all pretty much like this, the stories that we go to. And I said, well, if that's the case, then why do you think that there's such a tragedy that we have to change all of civilization to fix it. And she said, well, I just can't help what well, she said. Oh, she said, I'm, well, I'm a bleeding heart and I just can't help but to think that somebody out there might be suffering and I would really not like that. And I was thinking, okay, but somebody that you're describing, you, you have looked, you're a TV professional. You've talked to healthcare people. You've talked to social workers. You cannot find the person you're talking about. And so if that's the case, why are you making life decisions based on a sad, scary sounding fictional person? <laughs> because, yeah, it would be terrible if a person was in that situation. And maybe somebody on the earth somewhere is, but probably not in the United States. And so instead of thinking about a third party, non-existent person, we're specifically talking to people in situations. And we have some people maybe disabled, elderly, living alone in an expensive place. And 
there are things, pretty much there are things everyone can do. And as far as the the price, like the story here in California, first of all, you, if you were disabled in California on a government program, you would not have to live on that low of a price. Yeah. Because it, they would give you more money mm -hmm. than that. Yeah. Um, secondly, Jane has joint custody with her ex. ex and she lives in a place in a basically a flop house. It sounds like with eight other people in the same room. One Is that what bedroom. It says? In yeah. one bedroom, the state would would not you would not be allowed to have joint custody if that was your living situation. The government would not allow it. the The court would take away your child, and so so there's lie number one. So these things are not possible in this configuration. Mm -hmm. Lie number two is. Um, but they are victims. They're victims of generational poverty. That is That's a, a lie That's a straight crock. from the pit of hell. It's ridiculous. I am so sick of that term. If that's the case, why am I not in poverty? Why is my brother not in poverty? Why are all these other Because they people... were in poverty. <laughs> and... Generational poverty is a cop-out. Absolute well, cop-out. Well, it's an excuse for you to have other people... For you to rely on other people to solve the problem for you. And they're never going to solve it. And your problem is always going yeah. to exist if that's your attitude. Yeah. But anyone can get them. Well, anyone who doesn't have a serious like mental disability can get themselves out yeah. of that. Okay, lower IQ. But, and lower IQ doesn't make you unable to make money. Yeah. The thing is, IQ is or more... Or decisions. IQ is more of a college thinking measurement. Well, sadly... <laughs> College doesn't necessarily give people practical life skills. Yeah. You can be a septic tank pumper. You can be a trash guy. You can be a, um, a lot of jobs that people kind of look down on who especially have college degrees and say, well, I've got a degree and well, they make my a whole IQ. Lot more money. They may make more money than you Yeah. with your college degree. Yeah. All right, next. Lack of ability to make good decisions. That's just something Seriously? you have to learn in life. You can't make excuses. <laughs> Lack of ability... You know how you make you know how you learn to make good decisions? Hopefully you have parents that say, Don't touch the burning stove. But if you don't have good parents that teach you that, the first time you touch the burning stove, unless there's something dramatically wrong with your your development, if you have a massive developmental disability, that's a completely different story. Yeah. And that's a that kind We're of a person needs that. to be cared yeah. for completely. Yeah. But Virtually everyone else, if mom isn't kind enough and responsible enough to teach you not to touch the hot stove, you will learn that the first yes. time you do it. Mm -hmm. And so the, the thing about, what was the exact phrase? Lack of ability to make good decisions. So the thing about making good decisions is you learn good decisions by making bad decisions and having to ex experience the consequences. the consequences. Separate the consequences. If you don't suffer the consequences, the you problem. will always be in that position. Yeah, the and there are some people in our society who want people in that position all the time because mm -hmm. they benefit financially yep. from keeping people in those circumstances. Yeah. Chronic health issues. You can work around chronic health issues. There are very few people who are so completely disabled that they can't do anything at all. That's just an excuse. Or all those issues at, issues at once. I want you to admit that it takes a lot of energy, intelligence, and motivation to survive on $600 a month. And yeah, sadly, it's, it's, most people can't do it. Yes, and it's a choice. It does take it, but people can do it if they want to. The thing is, we're not saying it's easy to live on that low amount. And we're not saying we would want to choose to do that. And I'm sure you don't want to choose that either. But if you find yourself in a desperate situation, you do what you have to do yeah. to survive. And if you can't and we've live had on, to do that. Yeah, and if you can't live on six hundred dollars a month, then get a job so you make twelve hundred dollars a month. If you can't live on twelve hundred dollars a month, then get a job. I think isn't I think basic minimum wage is like two thousand dollars a month now. It's ridiculously it's crazy. high. <laughs> yeah, it is. You can easily live on minimum wage now. Easily. So don't now, give me no lip. I will say, you are completely 100% right if what you're saying is it's impossible to live on that amount of money and have the advanced cable package and the iPhone and the fancy oh. car and Eating out all the time eat out a lot DVDs. and all those things that, that are people's basic human rights, like internet. 
like if that's the way you think, then clearly you're, this isn't the right place yeah. for you. Yeah. Because we're talking about real people in the real world, yeah. not people that say, "Man, I moved out of a house and I, my parents had everything, and I should have everything too." I'm not. No, I'm not striking at young people because older people are just as just yeah. as much in that mindset. But what I'm saying is. If you have to adjust your expectations based on the circumstances that you're in, and if you live in Africa or um, lots of parts of Asia where you know you're destitute and there's just nothing you can do, and there's war and people are forcibly keeping you in that circumstance, that's different. Yeah. If you live in the United States or probably yeah. most places in you got especially it Western Europe. Yeah, you got it cushy. There's no person that lives yeah. like you're describing yeah. unless they just yeah. don't tell anybody they're in that situation. Yeah. So we made this video because this is going to be my answer every single time we get some of these whiners on here that do that. I, I have a conclusion too. I would say if if you... The other thing we would like to say is if you watch our stuff and you say, that just can't be done. Clearly, you don't want to do it, so don't waste your time watching the videos. But we're here to help people by giving ideas if you want to improve. And we're not saying that you're going to be a millionaire if you're living like this. We're just trying to give you ideas to help. And if you've decided already, I don't really want to be helped, or I maybe I really like, people don't like to admit it, but some people really love telling the story, the sad story more than they want to be out of a bad situation. And so yeah. one of those things is probably if you find yourself just wanting to critique us, don't. Just find something that tells you what you want to hear and makes you feel happy and makes you feel fulfilled and well maybe misery. stop wasting your time on videos like ours that you think aren't going to be of help at all and actually go out and do something productive with your life.